I have come back from holiday and I come bearing a new printer. This is a Radio Shack CGP115 color plotter. It was originally intended for use with the TRS-80, hence the branding, but in fact it has a standard printer interface on the back and with luck I should be able to make it work on any hardware, even USB. There were actually a ton of these made for all the different 8-bit micros. They're all based on the same ALPS plotter mechanism, which you can just see through the lid here. Now, this is a plotter, not a printer. Plotters work by physically drawing on the paper with a pen. This one uses these nifty little ballpoint pens. They physically draw on the paper. Uh, this uses two stepper motors, one to wind the paper backwards and forwards, and one to move the print head backwards and forwards, which is this. There's also a solenoid that makes the pen uh, physically touch the paper or not, which moves a little bar I'll show you later. It can change pens by rotating the wheel, which is somewhat delicate. And in fact, this whole thing is incredibly delicate and in fact does not work. So I got this off eBay as usual and it is in absolutely beautiful order. It is very nearly mint out of the box. That wonderful 1980s plastic texture is intact. So I would really like to actually make this work to demonstrate it. However, there are a few problems. One of which I have actually managed to fix, which was one of the impossibly delicate little plastic levers inside is broken. But the other I shall attempt to demonstrate, although it might be hard to see on the camera. So we plug it in, and when we turn it on, you'll be able to see it uh, try and do some test drawing. And I'm not going to put the pens in right now, because it's just going to make a mess. But So that's it homing the head. Right, it's now trying to draw squares in each colour for each of the four different pens. And you might be able to notice that the paper wheel here, the paper roller, is not moving. Therefore it's unable to feed paper up and down. And if I press and hold the paper feed button, you can hear something happen, but this thing doesn't move. In fact, it seems to want to move a little, which is odd. And you notice that there is, in fact, a noise being made. Some of this is coming from the step motor that drives the print head, but some of it's coming from the step motor that drives the roller, and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I can tell it to move the, the pen to the right, and that's nice and smooth. Back to the left again, and that tries to change heads. So that one's working all right but there's something wrong with the paper feed mechanism. So I'm going to take this thing apart and actually find out what's wrong, I hope. Hello, me from the future here. So this project turned out to be substantially more of a mess than I was expecting. Huge numbers of things went wrong and some of them weren't even caused by my own incompetence. I ended up with five and a half hours of video and some of the work I did with the camera turned off. So rather than upload all of that lot, warts and all, and make people wade through it, I think I'm going to try and edit down to the highlights and see what happens. Hey, anything's an improvement. Let's get on with it, shall we? So the first thing is to remove the paper. It uses this big roll of generic receipt paper. So put that aside. And you see there's actually not a lot to it. The Alps print mechanism lives in here. The PCB with the microcontroller on it that runs the whole thing lives in here. And there's a ribbon cable running, the back, running behind. So first thing is to take the lid off. So here is the actual plotter mechanism, this minuscule little thing. There is a step motor in here behind the shield and another one in here. They drive these little wheels. So this is 
the one that drives the print head. You can see it moving. That is the the cog that tends to fail. This is the one that drives the print roller. So I can turn this by hand, and that feels nice and smooth. Does it feel nice and smooth? It felt a bit odd. I think that's fine. If the gear here had split, I think it would have bound a bit more visibly. This is the solenoid that moves the print head back and forwards. It moves this thing here, which pushes this lever, which moves this bar. It's not actually moving the print head at the moment because the, the return spring for the print head is this tiny little foil thing here and it will only work if there is actually a pen in the print head. So uh, I'm not going to demonstrate that, but it will draw on the, uh, the roller. Uh, this was the piece that broke. I managed to fix this by uh, fusing the two halves together using a soldering iron, and I'm still amazed that seemed to have worked. Right, so here is the PCB that makes it all work. Try and get that under the camera. Uh, the actual electronics are in here under the shield. We have some power transistors. Uh, over here we have some more transistors. These are connected to the bundle of cables that goes to the print mechanism itself. So I believe that these are the amplifier transistors that drive the stepper motor signals. I'm sorry, these are not power transistors. These will be the voltage regulators that drive, that power the board off the DC supply. I see that they are both 17805s. So I can go and look up to find out what it is. Uh, dip switches here for control. I don't have the manual, but luckily the dip switches are documented on the bottom. Uh, so... Now this all strikes me as extremely strange, because this is a stepper motor. Uh, it gets driven forwards or backwards in steps based on the polarity of the signals you provide it. There's like four of them, I think, maybe six. Uh, the bundle of wires to the stepper motor is invisible underneath the plotter mechanism. So I would expect I wouldn't expect it to drive weakly, I would expect it to jiggle madly backwards and forwards if the signalling was wrong. But it does actually it does actually seem to be moving a bit, or trying to. Which is weird. It's possible that nasty noise is in fact a step motor jiggling madly backwards and forwards. So this is what makes me think that it's got nothing to do with this little cog here. I think whatever's wrong is an electronics problem uh, caused by the something on the PCB, uh, which actually makes me cautiously optimistic about figuring out what's wrong. Now the interesting thing was, when I got it, it actually did work. Uh, apart from this lever being wrong. Now I fixed the lever and while I was testing it by just powering the thing on and off so it drew its boxes, the boxes it drew became smaller and smaller and more and more rectangular until they were just lines as it began to move the, the roller less and less. And that's very strange. That suggests some kind of uh, ongoing failure, which was weird. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the plotter. Done this, so I know it works. I undo a couple of screws. While this is mint in the box, the box is no longer mint because it suffered a small mishap on the way back caused by a jar of my nephew's homemade apple and clove jelly. So while the printer is fine, the box itself has 
definitely seen better days and now smells fairly strongly of cloves which is a shame because it was a quite a nice box but that is what protective boxes are for so I'm not too sorry uh, this thing actually came with two complete sets of the very hard to find pens which is great they all seem to work which is also great I'm so lucky with this thing I thought I was paying slightly over the odds when I uh, bought it but given what I got that I am extremely satisfied so here you can see the bottom of the print mechanism here are the bundles of wires going to the step motors which are behind the shield you see there's no electronics it is just completely dumb everything is driven from the PCB over here so this bundle of wires is driving the step motor these two wires here are driving the solenoid no they're not ah ooh, that's interesting these two wires are sense wires they come from a reed switch under here which is used to detect which pen is at the top so if I rotate to here you see there is a metal bar on the top of the print head that will be magnetized so when that's at the top I've turned it a bit too far and it only turns in one direction so let's go around the top again so when that's at the top it will uh, trigger the read switch so that the computer knows that it's looking at the top pen that's neat this is the solenoid and that is driven by these two wires the red and black ones so this four bundle of wires are driving the uh, the print the paper roller all right so let me just rearrange things a little so I want this to go flat like so and let's just power it up again see what happens so there's everything on camera more or less Working, making funny noises. I don't think that worked. Uh, I don't think that was behaving the way it expects. Let me try that again without it resting on the table. Push some buttons. That's not working. That's supposed to be changing the print head. Okay, the. Let me just power it power cycle it to calibrate it. It changes the print head by moving the pen left and the little needle in there pushes the roll around a bit, which is why it jiggles backwards and forwards. If I press this button it should wind. Ooh. Right, that was supposed to be winding all the way to the end. If I push this one again, it winds all the way back. Now the other stepper motor is behaving the same way. That's very interesting. Right, uh, now the other stepper motor's gone. So what prog whatever progressive failure caused the failure of this one has now caused the failure of this one too. That's actually a little bit problematic because I was hoping to compare the signals to the two to verify what was going on. I'll tell you what it does suggest that the step motor is getting the right waveforms from the controllers just not at a high enough voltage so this suggests that the power supply to the step motors may be failing and it's been slowly degrading over time and the paper feed step motor needs more oomph than the uh, step motor that runs the uh, the print head, which is why that continued to work for a bit. 
This is an RF shield intended to prevent interference to the outside world from the, uh, the microcontroller inside. They don't do that anymore. Right. We've got a 6805 processor, uh, some 74LS logic, and a thing. I don't know what that thing is. This will most likely have the software uh, burnt into an internal ROM, which is a shame as I have a nice shiny new uh, EEPROM programmer that's wanting to read the ROM off. Oh well. Uh, these, uh, they're all different. I can go and look them up later and attempt to reverse engineer the circuit, which doesn't look complicated. This metal, really? That was plasticized on the inside. This metal shield is clipped in. So I'm going to assume that this copper thing's ground, so let's probe some stuff and see what happens. Let's try the voltage regulators first. 5 volts, dead on. Bet that's ground. 11.5 input. 11.5 is the DC supply. 5 volts is the output. That is working just fine. So let's try this one. Five point seven point seven. Uh, those should be identical by the looks of it. Is this the power supply regulator for the? Quite hot power supply regulator for the uh, for the stepper motor and solenoid. Is it dead? Which is why it's not working. That would explain everything. So I got to use one of these when they were new. When I was at school my school had one of these plotters it was used for, for on a BBC micro I don't know whether it was the same brand I said they made a bunch of these uh, some of them had their own uh, boxes so the Commodore version I think it was a cop I think the Commodore was the 1520 uh, that used the Commodore box and I got to play with the one my school had for a good bit. Eventually the the nasty nylon gears split and they threw it away. Um, which is a shame because these days they're easy to fix. There's something going on there with the solder mask. If only I still had a lot of the old hardware that wasn't considered special back in the day. I'd be able to repair it. I have thrown away so much stuff that I now re bitterly regret because it's easy to repair and is now quite rare. Never throw anything away. You know you'll miss it later. The HA17805 is a completely standard 5 volt regulator. And in my junk drawer, here is a completely standard 5 volt regulator. So I think. I think I should just remove this and find out what's and replace it and see what happens. Right, finally. Okay. Yeah, that's warm. So let's clean this up a bit. And have I managed to strip? Yes, I have managed to lift the pad blast. 
it's ground, so a barge wire is easy. Yeah, that was just too much force, I'm afraid. Uh, that's rank incompetent. I need to get better at soldering. Yeah, I've actually managed to lift several pads. Uh, the ones on the top here at each end are not connected to anything. They're just... Uh, uh, there's just a pad printed on the top of the board to anchor the component. And I managed to get them all off. The bottom looks okay. Um, I'll need to run a bodge wire from the middle to this ground. Uh, this pin here is the closest ground. Here's the replacement component. And yes, I did check that the pin out was compatible. Maybe I even did it right. So let me solder the bottom. with nice new joints that are actually not too bad. At least that one wasn't. Looks okay to me. Right, now, bodge wire. Now, before I do anything else, let's uh, just double check that that connection is going where I thought it was. So this pin here to here. And now it's not making contact with the ground pin of the component. So it's D6, that cap here, that pin there. We want to connect that to that. Tack on. On. All right, so let's clear some of the debris out of the way and turn off the soldering iron and plug everything back in again and power it on and see what happens. Briefly, because this is not attached to the heat sink. Okay, moment of truth time. And Power. Ooh, interesting. Right, that's doing exactly the same thing it was doing before, and that is very hot. Right. I think that was a complete waste of time. I think something else is wrong. Something down this end. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, okay. So, I'm going to turn this on and measure the voltage across here and turn it off again. work better with power. Not a lot. See, this one's not warming up. This one is almost red hot. I actually forgot to try powering it up without this thing attached. That is worth doing just in case I was completely wrong about what the regulators do. Uh, so 
So I don't think this is going to work again. So given that this is probably a fairly high current device, uh, I think I may um, Okay, let's take this off. Okay, well, I managed to get the components off eventually. I may have fried the component by getting it too hot. And I have managed to lift another track, another pad rather, so the board's not in great shape. But it's now off, so let's just do a few quick multimeter tests. All right, next step is that now that's disconnected, let's power on and see what we see. Because if I see the stepper motors try to move, I know that I'm wrong about what that thing does. And what do we see? Great. Fantastic. Right, that voltage regulator, its job was to move this. That's what it's for. Because that's a big coil, it will use lots of power, therefore it has a regulator of its own. Okay, I'm going to guess that this whole complex of transistors here is for driving the uh, the AC supply for this. Um, I am not going to bother trying to decode it in any great detail. Um, I know that bit worked, or at least it did until I broke the voltage regulator. So the output from the output to the stepper motors comes from this LB1257 this is then connected to the GPIO pins of the processor so an LB1257 is a driver circuit it's just an array of transistor networks uh, in fact, the data sheet says it is specifically designed for driving XY plotters and it names the ALPS plotter mechanism specifically. So it's dead simple. Uh, voltages come in, voltages come out. Uh, the 9 and 10 here are ground and power respectively. So we've got ground, which is the ground plane. Power is this, it's connected to this, which is a via. Oh, oh, or well, possibly the other way around. Right, we've got so we've got a big fat track here, we've got a big fat track here, but they're not connected together. This does kind of suggest that. Something's wrong here, or possibly here. Maybe the, this has gone. Really? Okay, well, gonna have to do some more debugging. So what we can do, and actually this is what I thought I was originally going to do before I got into the red herring with the voltage regulator, is uh, I can measure the waveforms in and out using an oscilloscope and I just spent some time setting up my oscilloscope so I can record it and that's now working so we can do that and see what comes out I hope the stepper motors haven't died I mean this is such a simple device what could possibly have gone wrong yeah okay well I'm gonna take a break and get back to this so you will see me in a few seconds but for me it will be probably a couple of days. So, wish me luck, I suppose.
Well, let's get back onto this thing. So, a quick summary for all you people who haven't been paying attention, which mainly means me, because the last time I touched this was yesterday. This is not working. It is not. It is failing to feed the two stepper motors in the plotter correctly. Yesterday, I attempted to fix it. I completely misdiagnosed what was going wrong, removed probably a perfectly functioning regulator, replaced it with another regulator, removed that regulator again, and in the process, slightly mangled the board, lifting a couple of pads. So, that turns out not to be the problem at all. So what I'm gonna do now is use my oscilloscope to try and get more information about what's going on. And I'm not going to touch the board until I have more idea of what and why is happening. So what I'm going to do is power the thing up and make it do things and then watch the waveforms that are produced uh, and then driven to the step motors. And the way this works is the processor here generates the signals via uh, its GPIO pins here which get routed to this chip which is a transistor array used for driving stepper motors. And the outputs for this then go to the feed to the stepper motors. So hopefully I should be able to see something interesting using the oscilloscope. And I have managed to hook the oscilloscope up to a camera so through the magic of video editing, you might be able to see what I'm doing. So let me just go and get that all turned on and we'll see how it works. Okay, here hopefully it should be and it's probably going to go up there somewhere depending on exactly what I'm doing. Uh, the oscilloscope is a extremely old and beautiful Tektronix 7603 weighing about 13 kilos. It is completely analog with no computer elements whatsoever those numbers you can see at the top of the oscilloscope are drawn using complex analog logic rather than anything resembling a computer. It is beautiful. I love it. I can barely lift it. Uh, and I'm using enormous amounts of image processing on the picture you're seeing because it suffers badly from screen reflection. And it's got a bit of a tendency to reflect anything it can see, including myself. So you should be, hopefully, seeing a basic image of what's on the oscilloscope. And uh, here's the oscilloscope probe. It's got a thing, single probe thing and a earth connection. Okay, so I should be able to press this button. Right. It should be driving this step motor, but I can see it going around a little. Just not enough to actually do anything. So now what I want to do is to do that while touching these con these contacts and see what comes out. This is going to involve more hands than I usually have. That one. Interesting. So it does seem to be glitching when I press the button. Let's try this one. Similar, this one. This one. Oops. This one. And there we go. Right. So I bet the four down this end are for the other motor. Yeah, the reason why I see it glitching is you see that the head moves slight, sideways slightly. What that's supposed to be doing is uh, moving the pen onto a little metal shield, which you can't see in there, so that when the paper moves, the pen doesn't uh, get doesn't accidentally touch the paper and draw. So that's producing a waveform. Let me just adjust the time base a bit. interesting looking waveform that I wasn't really expecting. Okay, let's try the other end of the thing. So what you were seeing there was the output. That was the 
result after amplification. So let's touch it here and do the same thing. This is what the processor is emitting. Interesting. So that's a nice TTL signal. Well, what we see at this end is not a nice TTL signal. It's floating high when it's not connected. So uh, that's, that is two and a half intervals, which is exactly what I expect. But that's going almost to six volts. Okay. That's not actually what I expect to come out of this thing. Uh, so either the driver chip is bad or there's something wrong with the stepper motors. Which is interesting. So that hasn't got us anywhere closer to figuring out what's gone wrong with the thing. Other than the waveform out looks weird. So when I started taking it apart, th th this motor worked fine. But this one had failed. And I was rather hoping that that would continue because then I could compare signals from the two. But that's really not really not how it worked out. Okay, so let's do some signal tracing, I suppose. Here's the bottom of the plotter. You can see the, the wires just come into pads here and are routed directly to the step motor via these five, uh, five, six, six signals. And I notice that two of them are black and the other four are multicolored, which makes me, oh yeah, I see that these two black ones are connected together. Right, this is, this is presumably ground, this one. That's the middle wire, it's, uh, it's white. What a fantastic color for a ground wire, if it's ground. So let's just move these screws out of the way before I short anything, plug it in, power it up again, and let's check that voltage. Yeah. Okay, so we know that the shield is, is zero volts, and this is our ground, and it says five volts. Right. Okay, it's an active low device. So again, where has this got us? Not sure. I think that driver chip is maybe bad. We could try replacing it. I can get a replacement for about three to four francs plus shipping. And it's just a matter of removing the old one, sticking in a socket and plugging it in. I mean, that's probably worth doing. If I'm gonna do that, then I might as well get a couple of uh, modern switching regulators and replace these. This one on the left is already like pretty mangled the advantage of switching regulators, they produce far less heat, so I wouldn't need the massive heat sink anymore. And uh, there'd be much less stress on the board, plus less worries about the uh, thing overheating if I don't get the thermal paste right. But other than that, I'm not really sure. I mean, the one bit that was working fine was the bit that I broke by removing this regulator, which is the step, the solenoid. Now that's the bit I would expect to fail. The solenoid is this. This just clicks this backwards and forwards. So I think that's probably the next thing to do. If the stepper motors themselves are faulty, I'm essentially stuffed. 
So I think I'm probably just going to have to call a break and come back with some parts that have been ordered. Oh well. See you next time then. So, I did a bit of research and I discovered that the waveform I observed on the oscilloscope is in fact completely normal. The mysterious hook at the beginning is caused by, as far as I can tell, back EMF from the rotating motor. It induces a voltage in the coils that you then feed back and you see it in the graphs. So that's fine. This suggests that the driver circuit is completely normal and operating correctly. So all that work I did on the board, including kind of damaging it, was a complete waste of time. Good to know. The person I talked to also suggested something that I really should have thought of myself, which is simply try lubricating the plotter. Now, I didn't actually do this because everything feels quite smooth when I rotate it by hand, but it occurs to me that the motors, being very small, and being operated at 100 hertz are uh, probably very low torque. So maybe it's just that the 40 year old lubricant in the bearings has slowly gummed up over time and it worked for a bit and then something got sticky and it stopped working. So let's give that a go. I have two lubricants. We have contact flon this is safe to use on nylon, which I'm going to use for most of the gears and the, the metal track that this thing moves on. You can see the bar in there. So I also have a light lubricating oil that I'm going to use for uh, some of the bearings, unless contact flon will do fine. And uh, Interesting, this does not actually fit into the nozzle. Well, I wasn't going to spray it directly onto the thing anyway. I was going to spray a little into this. Yeah, it's just stiff. Let's put a bit of contact flan into the pot. And then I'm going to use this syringe. This is not a hypodermic syringe. It is a ink refilling syringe. It's got a blunt tip. Gonna work. I'm gonna suck some into the syringe. Yeah, we got a little in there. Because this will then allow me to put it very precisely onto the uh, onto this. So we add some here. Somewhere in there. Here. There we go, right. And I can actually see it flow down the inside of the, the head joint. Okay, so this does not feel any different. I think that's smoother. Right, there is one other joint I need to do, which is uh, there's a little tiny metal roller in here which moves against the pen load bar and that rubs against metal. Um, this is probably the wrong lubricant for this, but it'll do. Let's put a bunch in there. Oops. Please. Lubricant everywhere. Is that smoother? Maybe? Oh well. Now let's power it on and see what happens. Nope, it's still not working. Okay, so that wasn't a particular success. It may take time to uh, like wear in.
In fact, when I move this, it is a bit grating, to be honest. And I can see a dark patch on the Yeah, the grating actually corresponds to one rotation of the motor bearing. So possibly the motor itself needs lubricating. You see there are these brass uh, bearings fore and aft of the motor. So let's clean this off, get rid of the rest of the lubricant. Put that aside. And let's get out the other one, lube oil. It is a light lubricant used for lubricating light things. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Yeah. Get some there. And let's just drop two here. That's not better. Hmm. So what about this side? Uh, this side is terrifying. So the print head is moved with this metal wire, which loops over this pulley, round this, round uh, Yep, around another pulley and back down. So, and there's another pulley this side as well. And if I were to undo anything, I'm quite certain that I would never get it back together again. One end of the wire is attached in here to this screw, which I'm not going to undo. But there's a spring clip on this big wheel. And I can take that off and then lift this thing off and probably all the wires would come loose and I'd never get it back on again. So what is wrong with the thing? Hmm. So does not appear to be lubrication. I think something mechanical has actually gone wrong. I think that the more I rotate this, the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There are two gears here. And they're not lined up. That's never going to work. What's this, is, what is this doing? Is, that a, is this a clutch? Right, because the two gear wheels both move against this piece here. But if they're not lined up, then they're just going to grate. Are they different sizes? No, they're the same size. They're just one of them is skew. I think I am going to have to take this spring clip off. Oh well. All right. Uh, there it is. Feel the wires tensioning as I pull. I don't want to do this. I think the I think the wires are captured by the these two pulleys. I'm not stretching the spring. Move the spring up to the other end. The spring stretching. There you go. What is this? What's going on here? I think one of these is warped. Oh, 
that sprung. It is a clutch. Because both sets of gears are meshed with this thing, so it won't they they cannot rotate independently. But there it's split. They can rotate like this. So maybe do I just set it and then push it on? Like so. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on here. Uh, I am going to actually reassemble this and uh, I think seek more assistance. Quick update, I discovered something. So I tried removing this gear and then I tried making the motor drive by pressing the button, button, that button. And you can see that it does indeed go around. But if I rest my finger on it, the motor stalls and there's a loud grating noise. You may not be able to hear on the microphone. There is very, very little torque available. I'm not pressing hard on the motor at all. Uh, it, there's just not enough torque there to operate the mechanism. So it's possible that this is all working absolutely fine and there's nothing mechanically wrong. It's just the motors have failed, which is weird. Um, I hear a rumor that occasionally the head, uh, the rotor, which is a permanent magnet, can become demagnetized. I have no idea. Um, so, I suppose I could replace the motors. Uh, this is not getting any easier to rotate, I have to say. So, let's just try and remove the motor and see what happens. So this is a simple crosshead, so I need a small Phillips bit. Will this work? Yes. I don't want to knock any of the gears or, heaven forbid, the spring clip out of the way. Okay, that shifted it, so I should be able to go back to the small screwdriver. Yeah, and there goes the motor. Incidentally, I figured out what the clicking noise as the thing rotates is. There are fine teeth in the roller here that grip the paper, and it's bumping over this thing, so that's actually all as intended. There's a brass baffle thing bearing, not baffle, bearing here. I bet there's one sticking out the other side, and that's what you can see here. You see it does move a little. But... The position is such that I, the only way to get it out is to move it this way, to get the bearing out from underneath this, but I can't do that because it's wedged under there, so do I insert a screwdriver and just leave her? Uh, yes, yes I do. Wow, what's that? Okay, so here is a motor. I don't know what this thing that came off is. It's small and bronze. Does it, does it still go round? Find that button. This one goes round. Still stalls and I put my finger on it. Well, I can replace the motors if I can find a replacement. I have no idea what this is. The only labeling is H4 H434 here, which is not very helpful. Uh, stepper motors are supposed to have a fairly standard set of mounts, but I 
I bet this is not one. My best bet's probably to find another plotter and replace the mechanism uh, wholesale. Uh, at least the gearing all seems to work, so uh, I would have spare parts, including the the nasty nylon bearing, bike bearing gear. This is the gear that tends to split, so having spares is a good thing. I reckon this is pointing fairly conclusively at motor failure. I have never heard of this happening with one of these, particularly both motors at the same time. Okay, so I think this motor is faulty. It feels okay, sort of. But it appears to be generating very little torque. So let us try to actually measure how much torque it's emitting. Now I have a rather dubious way of doing this. Let's stick some blue tack on. So power the thing up. Wait for it to stop moving. This is it doing the self-test drawing. Okay. And let us insert this nail. Now, hopefully the blue tag is stiff enough to hold it to the gear wheel. Let's try pushing the button. Fun. Uh, it needs to be upright. Yeah, that's not great. It's too off-center. You can feel it wobbling. Let's try that. That's better. Okay, so put it on the table and press the button. The table... Yeah, let me put it somewhere where you can see it. The table stops it moving. And it's going to apply a little bit of torque, a little bit of force to the table. So I'm going to try and measure it using this set of kitchen scales. This is kitchen science. Can I make it so that you can see the screen? Just. It's like going to be super, super inaccurate, but may give us a number. So Tear it down to zero. It's a fairly sensitive. Let's try that here. Press button. Uh, it doesn't seem to generate enough to measure. So it doesn't. That doesn't give us any numbers, but does at least does at least give a lower bound, I suppose. Okay, well, what's the smallest amount that this thing can measure? I've got some of these. Five grams. Let's try it over here. Still five grams. So I know it's less than five grams. Let's try one of these. Nothing. This is a bit bigger. Two grams. Two grams. Right, well... We know now that at a distance of, call it uh, 20 millimeters, it's producing force of less than one gram of force. So uh, you measure torque in Newton meters. So the number of Newtons is, uh, so I'm getting a torque of less than 0 0.0004 newton meters. I think that is not enough and it is broken. So, let's try the other piece of debugging I was wanting to try. I still haven't entirely ruled out electrical failures. I still don't like that, that feels way too stiff but uh, it could be problems with cables and things. So let's 
unplug the motor okay it is set to 5 volts so here is the the motor as I want we're going to set this to 5 volts and then energize one of the coils It moves a little. I'm just sort of moving it randomly by energizing the coils, but uh, you can see it turn. Now, kind of what I want to do is to permanently energize it and then try and turn it by hand to see how much resistance there is. Okay, it's drawing 20 milliamps. So that rotates freely. That requires a bit of force to push, but not a lot. So I think this is probably generating the same amount of torque is interesting. Well, that hasn't actually got me any further, but uh, if I can replace these motors with similar ones, then maybe I can get this thing working. More likely, I will have to find a whole new plotter assembly and install it into the chassis. That shouldn't be too hard. These things do hit eBay, and many of them are broken because the uh, the spindle gears are dead, but I have two working ones here that I can pull off. Yes, interesting. Oh well. So, more news. I took the x-axis motor off in order to try lubricating it. I wanted to get right into the bearings, only to discover that it grates when it goes round. So this motor is basically dead. I think they've both failed, probably for the same reason, whatever that is, I am just going to have to get new motors, or more realistically, an entire new plotter mechanism. Well, damn. Still, it was 40 years old, so... Look what I've managed to do. So... If I press this one, yep. So it is actually now moving correctly, more or less correctly. See, that's no longer changing pens. So what I did was I pushed the axle, not with that screwdriver, didn't I pushed the axle in this way. And the motor started working again. So the shaft is slipping on the in the bearing. You can actually see that happen a little. So well, let's do the calibration thing. Ah. And now it fails. I push it in, it works again. Now it's failing. So let's try it like that. Oops. Yep, it's trying to draw squares. The other motor actually behaves similarly, but weirdly in reverse. So I need to push against this side, this end, 
and suddenly it starts working. So what's happened is the motor bearings have died and well something in the motor bearings have died. This is actual genuine motor failure. And uh, I can try and get replacement motors, but these are so old and so unlabeled that the only realistic way to do this is to find another plotter module and cannibalize it. Um, so I wonder if I can bodge something. For example, something to keep the shafts, keep pressure on the shafts. This one is fairly straightforward because something that just pushes against both sides uh, or rather pushes against this side but I don't want to push against this one. You know? Oh dear. Well at least I know that the bulk of the plotter works and I can attempt to fix the board and repair the damage I did to it. But what am I going to do about this? I was all set to just give up, you see, so... What can I put here? I want something that applies a, a bit of pressure to the shaft, but not too much, and not too much friction. Well... Is there anywhere to fasten anything to? Not really. This shield is supposed to go over it, but it just clips on. It's not actually connected to anything, so I can't screw anything on there. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to go away and think about that, I think. So... I have a cunning plan to bodge this thing into submission and hopefully make it work again. Now, uh, the plotter assembly, I reckon, is a write-off. Ideally, I would replace the motors. I don't think this is going to be possible because I'm not going to be able to find replacement motors that will fit. In the unlikely event, which I can, actually installing them will be a nightmare. I am, in fact, much more likely to find a complete replacement plotter assembly which I shall just swap into my rather good-looking chassis. So I am going to make some modifications to the plotter. Now, the problem is that the bearings inside the motor appear to have collapsed, and they only work properly if I apply force to the shaft. This one, I need to push the, sh push the shaft in this way to make it work. This one... I need to push the shaft in this way to make it work. And I have a cunning plan for doing this. So for this one, I need to, whoops, let's do not do that. I need to push it this way. Now I am going to use this bolt to do this. The end of the bolt is slightly concave. So it will very nicely go on the end of the metal shaft, a spot of oil there, and I'll end up with a fairly low friction contact surface. It won't slide off, and uh, I can adjust the pressure easily enough by moving the bolt in and out. But what's the bolt going to fasten to? The answer is this 20mm washer. I am going to mount this here inside this empty space. And the bolt is going to go in to the washer with a nut on the inside so that I can adjust the position by rotating the washer. How am I going to fasten the washer in? Epoxy. This side is easier. I need to push the shafts in this way. Now, a similar mechanism would involve pushing against the side of the case, and I don't want to modify the case because the case is in really good condition. So instead I'm going to use this. This is actually a key puller I made by crudely bending a paper clip. And it turns out that I can just do this. Oops, I can do this rather. Get actually into position, like so. And that provides enough force to the motor. I have actually tried it. So that bit's relatively straightforward. I'm actually going to make a new one that's more custom design. 
apart from anything else, I want to keep the uh, the key puller for pulling keys with. Now, chances are that this will not actually make this work for any length of time. I think that the bearings are just going to continue to fail, so it will work for a bit and then die. However, one of the things I will be able to do is to measure stuff like the step size of the motor, which I don't know yet, which will help me find replacement motors, if such things exist. So, let us get started. First thing is the washer. So the bolt's going to go here, the washer needs to go about here, and I'm going to use a little bit of blue tack to just temporarily hold the washer in place, get that roughly vertical. And more or less aligned, like so. The inside of this is nicely uh, rough, so the epoxy should work fine. And this will go in like so. That looks fine. So next step, just do a bit of swabbing with some IPA. Just to clean up the metal a bit, because I've had my greasy fingers all, <laughs> all over it. Okay, I've had my greasy fingers all over it, so I'll just dab a bit down here, and that's all I need. So let me just put this away before I start hallucinating. While the epoxy, uh, epoxy, while the IPA uh, evaporates, I am going to get the epoxy ready, for which I need my two-part epoxy. This is ancient and, you fairly horrible. Uh, yeah, I can't actually tell the difference between the plastic and the half-congealed rotten epoxy. But we squirt some, quite a lot actually, into the pot. Uh, put the cap back on, hopefully the right way round, like so. So we now have unstirred epoxy. I need a match. Match is now out, because you always use matchsticks to stir epoxy. Those are the rules. Mix this together good and hard. Like so. And... Dab it onto my washer. There's probably going to be quite a lot of force involved here. So I'm actually going to put a fair bit on. Um, I made a lot of epoxy because it's hard to make small quantities of epoxy. Okay. That should probably do. Okay. This bit I'm not going to do now. I need to wait for the epoxy to cure. But there is something that we can do while we're waiting, which I'm going to do now. And that's to deal with the power supply issue. Because uh, I mistakenly removed one of the regulators from the board and made a bit of a hash of the board. I lifted some pads. And the other regulator is also a linear regulator. And I don't like these. They get really hot. I don't like the fact it needs a heat sink. Just running this thing on the bench without the heat sink attached, this has been getting pretty warm. So I'm just going to replace them both with uh, modern buck regulators. Uh, Getting ahead of myself here. Here is one of them. It's a cheapo Chinese adjustable power supply module. You feed voltage in, out comes voltage at a particular uh, volt, uh, out comes electricity at a particular voltage. You can adjust the voltage by rotating this pot. They're cheap, they're cheerful, they work reasonably well. So I'm going to use a couple of these. The, this board uses two regulators 
this is the one for the electronics and stepper motors this is the one for these the head the the pen solenoid because that uses tons of current so I'm going to stick with the same plan and use two different power supplies uh, so because I'm going to replace them with the buck regulators I don't need the you can't see it because it's not on the camera the big chunky heat sink anymore so I'm going to take that off it just screws on which is nice and I have an ulterior motive for this, which is, it gives me two screws and two screw mounts, ideally suited for placing the regulators. So, here's the first one. Uh, in is this way, out is this way. So, we're going to put in towards the back of the case. Just groups on here. Very straightforward. And the second one needs to be the same way around. Goes here. All right. And they are nice and firmly attached. So the next step is to actually wire things up and this involves working on the board for a bit. So the first thing is uh, I want to remove the second, buck, uh, second linear regulator and this time I'm going to do it properly as opposed to the first one. So how do you get these things off properly? Well. What you do is you sacrifice the component and just chop it off like so. because this means you now have three separate legs which you can desolder one at a time with ease. And the last pin is actually invisible behind the shield comes out easily enough. So this now gives me three holes which is V out, V in, two, two, two different V outs. Uh, this is the one for the power supply, this is the one for the solenoid. Okay, first is to remove this patch wire because I don't need this anymore. And it's just kind of getting in the way. The three things I need to hook up are uh, ground. See, I was hoping that these would be connected together, the uh, the electronics ground and the solenoid ground, but they, apparently they are not. I thought they were from last time. So they are going to need separate grounds, one to each power supply. Uh, the other thing I need to hook up is of course the 5 volt output, one of which goes to the electronics and the other which goes to the solenoid. And the third thing is the V-in, and these should be connected together. They are connected together. Yeah. And that's just straight to the, uh, the input from the power supply. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, this is the input here. It's this big track, which goes to here, to here. They're both connected directly together and one end to a smoothing capacitor. So the two grounds are a little bit more interesting because one of them is on the top here and the other is, the other is connected directly to this big copper pad. So let us attempt to clean out some of these holes. So I'm going to need to put wires in them. There we go. Right. So we have three holes for the electronic supply. Now what am I going to do with the 
solenoid supply. Uh, I managed to lift a pad for uh, this is V out. This big chunky track here connects down to the power transistors that generate the solenoid output. So I think, can I put a wire through there? I think I need to clean that to be honest. Or I can just solder the wire onto the bottom. Uh, there's also, I need ground, but the ground track is at the top. So I will in fact, wait a minute, what is this connected to? There is just the one track. It runs from this hole to this diode and nowhere else. Ah, right. Right. Yeah, I think what this is doing is it's protecting the electronics from big induced reverse current spikes. So the solenoid has a big coil in it and it stores a lot of energy. And when, it, when you stop energizing the coil, you get that energy back out again as reverse uh, voltage. And I think that this is protecting, allows the, the two grounds to be connected together, but it prevents current flowing backwards from the solenoid into the electronics. So, uh, I think I do need to connect the ground for the solenoids supply to here somehow. The other thing I would need to connect is V in to the solenoid power supply but I can actually just common that from this one. I would rather use a separate wire, to be honest. Actually, I'm gonna play this smart. Rather than solder the wires directly to the board, I am going to uh, attach these headers because that will then allow me to actually have a connector. Because the power supplies are screwed to the other side of the chassis, uh, every time I want to take this apart, I'll end up with two sections connected to each other by soldered wires. So these headers will actually help there. So I just need uh, an appropriate size of one of these to get them in line, it, get them lined up. Okay, that has them all held in place. So now I just need to solder the bottoms on. So this is there's a joint. Let me just no. Uh, that managed to push the component a bit out of the board. So there we go. Ouch, the top end is spiky. I just need to arrange this a little. The reason for plugging this on is to get all the pins lined up with each other. It's also a cheap and easy way to hold the header in the board while you work on it. Okay, let's do this one next. Double check positioning. It's not brilliant. This one is actually skewed. So let's see if I can deal with that. looks better. Does the plug still go on? Uh, no, it 
doesn't because they no longer line up. In fact, they are not, uh, the two sets of connectors are in fact not uh, a tenth of an inch apart. So no, this plug would never have gone on. Gone on. That's why it wasn't working right. No, never mind. They're both reasonably neat now, so let's solder that other joint. There. I've done that one. Let's try and get access under the shield. That gives me access to this one. And this one. Luckily, the shield appears to be heat proof plastic. Okay. Now, this middle pin here is the, uh, the solenoid's ground wire. And it's not connected to anything on the inside because I lifted the pad and the track is broken. So I'm going to need that uh, patch wire back again. Now, I actually screwed up. I mean, one of the many times I screwed up with, with this last time I soldered this on because the ends of the wire were too long and I ended up shorting the ground to power which is why the first attempt at the linear regulator it overheated and didn't work so to be careful That's not solid enough. I'm going to need to put some solder on this pin. Yep. Because there's no pad to connect the pin to, the solder just blobs up around the pin and it's really unpleasant. Be solid, yes, and then this can curl around and connect to this diode. Like so. Okay, so we now have some header connections. Uh, let's Beep that out and just make sure that it is, does appear to be connected to sensible things. So, this is ground, we know it's ground, so this should be connected to the middle pin. Yes, but not this one. This has its own ground. Uh, the 5 volt line we know is uh, available down here on the driver and the uh, the motor driver and that should be connected to here yes uh, but not to this one that's correct we know that these two pins should be connected together because they are V in yes and we know that this is the solenoid ground and that should be connected to this yes this is the solenoid power line and it comes down here to the top end of this power transistor. So let's check that. Uh, this is the solenoid. Here is the power transistor. Correct. All right. So we now have headers on the board. Next step is to come up with a couple of connectors for which plug onto these. Uh, this involves crimping things for uh, these things. I have a kit somewhere. I will go and fetch that. Or alternatively, I have a million of these. I can just pull off set to three. So we have uh, red, orange, and yellow. 
Here we have a matching set of red, orange and yellow. They've got connectors on one end and pins on the other. All very easy. No need to crimp anything. So this will go on the board. We're going to use red for, for the actual V out, orange for ground and yellow for yeah. and yellow for uh, V in. They're all the wrong colors, but that's what I've got. So I'm going to go on. There we go. And the other side use the same colors in the same order. So, okay, now we can rotate the shield back into position and we can even stick these things back, not those things, the, these plastic things in to hold it in place. One, two, and oh, three, there's one. And uh, that side of things is done. Oh yeah, I want to put the the RF box back on. Where did I put it? Here it is. You can't see the rest of my workbench, which is a blessing, really. So this goes on somewhere. Yep. All done. So this there will then get mounted inside the board like I have made a very stupid mistake. Yep, I have. <laughs> I've put these connectors on the wrong side of the board. Go me! So the correct thing to do would be to desolder these but I really don't think I'm up to doing that without ruining the board. So can we just bend them instead? The answer is yes. Poorly. Okay, right, that should work. So now the board will go in like this. It's still not brilliant because there's not a lot of clearance here, but it should work. Anyway, the next bit I do is uh, on these. So unplug all this lot and put this aside. Because we now need to solder these pins onto the board. Now the colors we I had decided on was red for V out, uh, orange for ground, and yellow for V in. So we have in minus, in plus. So these two just go on like this, and red comes up here. Uh, these are commons together, the two uh, in minus and out minus. All right, now this one I've actually used before in a previous project, so it's got this stuff all over it. It means the pads are already tinned. But anyway, uh, Put quite a lot of gunk on that one, actually. Let's clean that off a bit. Okay. Uh, actually, I think I have a spare. I may use a fresh one. Mm, no, I don't. This one uh, already has pins attached to it. Uh, just while the soldering iron heats up. 
I have a number of cheaper modules. These are voltage converters, 3.3 to 5.5. This is a 5 volt and 3.3 volt unit that's supposed to plug onto breadboard, except it turns out that my breadboard is a different size and it doesn't work. These are 3.3 volt uh, regulators. Uh, annoyingly, these are not the same pinout as the 7805. And these are voltage inverters. You feed in, say, ground and three volts, and what you get out is uh, minus three volts and ground. Except the only time I ever used one, it ended up destroying an elderly computer of mine. So either I don't know how to work it right or it's faulty. I'm not going to touch them again for a while. Come on. Down. Yeah, there we go. They'll drift like mad, but that should work. Okay, so I suppose the next thing is the smoke test just to plug in the 5 volt lines and then turn it on and see what happens. So this head is now moving fine. However, the solenoid is not working. Why is the solenoid not working? If I start it up with paper feed press, it actually does more of a test. This is it's actually writing text. Solenoid is not working. Why is the solenoid not working? Uh, isn't there a thing missing here? Wait, what? Was that missing all along? Well, it thinks it's generating 5 volts. I believe that's just a smoothing capacitor. Well, uh, the epoxy is decently solid, so it'll take a little bit to cure. So I will just actually remove the blue tack. Yeah, the blue tack is slightly epoxied to the chassis and just do this thing. So that goes on like this. Like so, and I just buy a bit of Tension. I have a feeling that's not actually going to work. I think the cup shape on the bottom of the bolt is not actually quite cuppy enough. Yeah, that ain't working. Uh, this, this principle will work, I just need something else under there, some kind of uh, low friction thing. So let's just wind that back a bit, just get that out of the way, and let's have another look at the solenoid. Let's try that, what the hell? Uh, weren't these supposed to be attached to something? Yeah. 
disappeared off the flipping board. I can actually see brown, purple, grey. <sighs> okay. I suppose we better put those back on then. Please. So I should be uh, clearing the holes and putting the wires through, but I'm not going to because that will involve way too much assembly in the board. So just putting nice clean solder blobs on the broken pads. Like so starting with grey. I do not believe this is the cause of my solenoid problem. But I can always hope. Okay. And power on to see what it does. No solenoid. It's doing something. So I would expect the solenoid to be producing spikes in each direction in order to uh, either flip the solenoid, flip the lever in one direction or the other. You see it actually stays when I put when I push it. And annoyingly this bit actually worked before I started taking things apart. One other possible thing that's worth looking into is how much current that solenoid is drawing. Does my cheapo uh, buck regulator, is it actually capable of drawing that much current? Of, of generating that much current rather? That's easily measurable. I simply need to look at the output voltage to see whether it drops. So five volts, ooh, that's not smooth. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna take this off the board and replace it with the one with the smoothing capacitor. I have no idea why this is missing the smoothing capacitor, but the spikiness of the output voltage makes me think there are bad things happening. So let us do that. Right, now look. And power on. Oh, that moved. But it's not moving again. It's going out, but it's not going in. I think this may not be generating enough oomph. I th let's try the the scope again. I don't want to have to go back to that bloody linear regulator, given all the effort I took to replace these things. Oh, that's completely rock solid. So if, the, if this was running out of voltage, I'd expect to see a voltage drop here, but I'm not, so that does, doesn't appear to be what's happening. So 
So the other thing is to check the uh, the output voltage from the that's actually going to the solenoid. Let's do that again. First, it draws the boxes. Right. Now it's okay. You see, lots of pulses down to zero, and if I push this, uh, it's not popping back. Either the driver logic, driver transistors here that are trying to make the step motor work, the solenoid work have failed, or something in the solenoid has failed. I don't know what, but frankly, I've been at this hours today, so I am going to give it a break and try and figure out more. It was so nearly working too. Update, I have news. I tried this. This is the original regulator that I took off the board, wired into the board. And So watch what happens, let me just plug this thing back on. Get the clicking noises. And this is it drawing text. So this regulator works. This one does not, but this was generating rock solid five volts. So why was this working but this one wasn't? Let's wait for this to finish. Okay, so I suppose it might not have been, this might not actually be a five volt regulator. That seems extremely dubious to me. I mean, it does say 7805 right there on the label. But let's actually check that. So this should be ground, and this should be, let's put that where you can see it, five volts. So, uh -huh. I'm deeply confused. Well, I suppose I could always put the regulator back. Then I would need a heat sink. I mean, it's not getting warm, but it's not drawing much. This solenoid draws uh, an amp at five volts, but the the whole transistor logic here, the whole purpose of that appears to be that it only energizes the solenoid in pulses to flip it from one direction to another. Okay, I've done a bit more work on this. So, if this thing wants a linear regulator to run the solenoid, it can get a linear regulator to run the solenoid. And so I have done this. This is the linear regulator that I pulled off the board. This is not the, the original one for the pen solenoid, which is this one. It's the one that ran the electronics because I snipped this one off the board and therefore it's less likely to be overheated and wrenched around. And uh, in lieu of the big metal heatsink, I have attached this little aluminium thing. Now this should be safe because uh, the head seems to draw lots of current in very, very short bursts. The overall load on the regulator is quite small. It's the other one which seems to use most of the power because the other regulator is powering both the electronics and the stepper motors which run continuously. So this seems to be okay. And what I've done is I've soldered some pin sockets onto it. So it just pushes onto my socket here. 
uh, which is reasonably robust and means I don't have to think fiddle with the board anymore. I really don't want to get the, take those things off. I might uh, break the board uh, irrecoverably. And what I've done here for the uh, the Y step motor is I'm using this little piece of plastic. This is actually uh, the top of a milk bottle because there's this little indentation here which fits neatly over the axle uh, and is self-centering. So this then provides a bit of pressure and it does actually seem to work. It's bodgy as hell and I'm not convinced it will continue to work but it will do for now. So I can demonstrate this working. So this is all moving normally. Right. So we should actually now have enough in place um, to actually give this a try. Okay. So let us power off, power on again, and let's see what happens. Right, it's, it drew something, but there's just not quite enough oomph to make the paper feed work. Yeah, I need... So you see, that's too much, but the alternative appears to be too little. Let's try that now. That drew a square. That drew a sort of rectangle. Another rectangle. Another rectangle. Yeah, that's not that worked so well. This is it drawing text. So, it's working, it's just not working very well. I can see small text here, about the right sort of shape. It hasn't fed correctly onto the next line. Yeah, I'm going to have to come up with a different solution for this. So, a bit of a marathon later, I have it all put back together. I actually made several changes, including replacing the paper clip that was holding the tension on the X motor, mainly because I lost the black one. Uh, there's a bit more tension now and it does seem to be working rather better. You can see it there, slightly different shape. Uh, on this side I drilled a cavity in the end of the bolt and added this rubber washer to give more consistent pressure. That seems to be working better as well. Uh, you can see that I put it all back in the case. Another thing I made was that I actually managed to solder the brown and grey wires onto the motherboard the wrong way round, so these two buttons were swapped. That is now fixed, and it is now working a lot better, as I shall hopefully demonstrate. So, uh, hold down the paper feed button to do the self-test, turn on. So it draws a black square, it draws a blue square, it draws a green square, it does not draw a red square.
there. So it has, you can see that, uh, it's drawn squares that are actually square. Um, it's drawn black text, blue text, the green text is not very good, the red text is missing completely, and then we're back to black and blue again. This is the 40 column mode, so that the characters are twice as big as they are in 80 column mode. I don't know what's wrong with the red pen. It just doesn't seem to be drawing on the paper when it's in the print head. If I take the pen out and scribble it on the paper, it works fine. So something there needs adjusting to try and uh, increase the pressure on the paper. The same is probably true with the blue pen. The, uh, the pressure on the paper is actually done by a combination of a spring in here and a minuscule foil thing which the end of the pen slips into. So possibly something there needs tinkering with. I don't actually know. Let me just change pens to one of the suspect ones, which is red. And I flip this forwards. And I push the head across. It should leave a line, but it doesn't. So not sure what's going on there. And then I don't know what I can adjust. I don't know if you can make it out, but there is a red spot here from where the pen touched. So it is. It's making a bit of a mark. So it's now in mostly good working order apart from that. I don't know how long it will continue in working order, so I think I think I will wrap this up as it's enormously long. I have managed to bodge the thing back into working order for at least black, which is fine to be honest. I'll continue to tinker a bit to see if I can make the other pens work. Possibly they're just old and not particularly good anymore. They are like all 40 years old. And I think I shall attempt to set up a proper demo video of this thing, which is not part of the repair video. Anyway, well that took way more hours than I was expecting. And now I need to try and figure out some way to edit this all into uh, shape to stick this on YouTube. That will be exciting and probably the hardest part of the entire job. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments.